Good morning. I hope everyone's having a good day. Today I want to talk about smart brevity. And you see that it's subtitled Surviving Collis's Class Primer. Uh, I have long believed what the book Smart Brevity teaches. And so I'm going to run through in two presentations some of the core elements of Smart Brevity. And we're going to see how it can help people write better, more active, more concise, more energetic sentences. I should offer one quick caveat. The authors of Smart Brevity work in the news business. So some of the things they're talking about might not work perfectly in a college classroom, but the basic principles that they have behind things, say more with less, is something that I think works in the college classroom. I think it works on the, in the business. I think it works almost every place people communicate, every place people write. So this presentation and the next one are just going to grab the highlights of Smart Brevity and talk about how I think it applies to comp class. And I hope that it'll explain how comp class can apply to other spots in the college curriculum. The goal of any communication, it should be concise. It should contain no unnecessary words, no unnecessary sentences. That's the goal. It comes from Strunk and White's Elements of Style, written in the early 1900s. It was the Bible for many writers for most of the 20th century. And I would argue that it still should be one of the key books that one turns to when one writes uh, in the 21st century. I referenced Christopher Hitchens in one of my other presentations, and I talked about the fact that one should write as if it's a conversation. That anyone, according to Hitchens anyway, anyone who could speak in an interesting manner could also write in an interesting manner. If you look at the first bullet point, people want to know something new, revelatory, exciting. They want you to put it in context. They want you to tell why it matters. Claim, data, warrant. We don't have an opportunity in a comp class or a college class for those visual or verbal cues. And I'm going to argue that almost every college class is going to ask you automatically to go deeper. So that's not necessarily an option. Okay. If you look at the second bullet point, I do believe we have a huge burden of not being meandering, of not being self-centered, of not being burdensome. So, Smart Brevity's core four muscular T's, we'll talk about that. One strong first sentence, we'll talk about that. The context or why it matters, we'll talk about that. The choice to learn more, we won't. The choice to go deeper is not a choice that you really have. It's an expectation. You will go deeper. For comp class, consider the T's your title. Six strong words. You'll notice that they're going to talk about a headline, title, email subject line, title, six strong words. When you do the extra credit, I'm asking for a six word summary. Six strong words about that presentation. Six strong words that get me interested in the piece you're writing for the essay. Six strong words that will get other professors interested in what you're doing with the essay. And again, the emphasis is six strong words. The lead is the intro sentence that grabs the reader's attention. In a lot of ways, I would hope that the thesis does that at the end of the first paragraph. And again, going back to an earlier presentation, 
follow expectations when it comes to the idea of where a thesis should be stated. However, if you're writing an essay test, that thesis can easily be your very first sentence. But do something to make it memorable. Look, the thesis can easily tell people something they don't know, but direct and short and sharp as possible. If you're writing a novel, it's perfectly fine to have a nice, long, luxurious sentence that tries to suck the reader in. A composition isn't a novel. Green isn't writing novels. You're not writing novels for this class. Get people's interest right off the bat. What do they need to know? I'm giving you in some ways that funnel thing. And with the funnel, you're basically making some broad general statements and going on down. But that first broad general statement should be something that's going to grab the reader's attention. Something they should know. The guys who do this run the Axios news site. And their big thing, and you're going to see it later, is that paragraphs should fit on a phone screen. So they're talking about the high, their, their title. Your CEO has no lunch buddy. That's a tease. It's going to suck people in. And then it gives me the lead. Offices are opening up, but the executives, only executives want to go into work. So what they're telling you is the bosses are in the office by themselves. And what does that mean for businesses? Then you just need to kind of sweep up on the screen. In my case, I want to go to the next paragraph. What does that mean for businesses? I'm not in one. I'm in education. But what does that mean for you who in your future, 90% of you, 95% of you are going to be working for a business, working for, you know, not an educational facility, educational institution, excuse me. You've heard me scream claim data warrant a lot last week. Why should anyone care? And the fact of the matter is, if you look at this second line, we all know a lot about the a little. I mentioned the T.S. Eliot quotation earlier this semester, when everybody knows something about many things, it's difficult to know whether we know anything at all. Your readers of an essay it isn't that they're too ashamed to ask. It's that they don't have the opportunity to ask because they're reading an essay. So explain through a warrant why the data links to your claim, why all of this matters. Answer the question that's at the back of everybody's mind. Why should I care? It's your job to tell them why they should care. Look, essays are going to be longer than the articles they're talking about. He argues that they should try to keep paragraphs short, perhaps to one phone screen. I'm not asking you to write on the phone. But I am asking you, A, to have paragraphs, and B, to keep them short enough so that everything can be readable and digestible. I think the phone screen per paragraph works pretty well. I know that if you take a business communication class, they're going to tell you that email paragraphs should fit on a single computer screen. The ultimate goal. In the classroom, I'm going to ask people to stop and read this to themselves. Sorry, you're stuck hearing me read it here. We're not saying to write short for short's sake. You bring more soul more salience to your writing by being direct, helpful, and time-saving. Don't omit important facts or nuance, oversimplify or dumb down. Short, not shallow, is what they tell their reporters. Short, not shallow should be the goal here. Don't omit facts. Supply nuance. Don't admit it. 
don't treat any of your readers ever as if they're dumb. Short, not shallow. They provide a perfect example. It's not do a lot more with less. The a lots don't matter. Do more with less. If I want to be a grammar Nazi, I would say do more with fewer words, but do more with less. And that's the goal. Two little axioms here. Do more with less, short, not shallow. That's going to wrap this one up. There'll be a part two for some more application of the smart brevity. And there will also be a how-to in a couple of uh, class periods where people can look at how do I get rid of unnecessary words. Hope everyone has a good day. Hope to see all of you in the next class period.